But before we start, I just want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. More info on that at the end of the video. What up fellow nerds, Martina here, and today I thought we could do something a bit different. Because it's getting darker and darker, at least here in Norway, and it's gonna continue to get darker for a while, so what's a better time of year to make some cool LED lamps? So I'm gonna make three different modern lamps, I'm gonna try to make it as cheap as possible and also as easy to replicate as I can. And you know me, of course they're gonna be RGB. RGB is life. So this is the plan, the first lamp is gonna look like this. And to look at the sketches, the back side will look something like this. And for that part, I'm going to use... This small squared piece of wood that is exactly thick enough to fit a LED strip. This is what's going to lead the light in the direction I want it to. And for the lamp itself, I'm going to use this flat piece of wood here. Nothing special about it. It's really cheap, that's all I can say. And I'm just gonna cut it into a bit shorter pieces first. The pieces are still looking pretty rough, so I'm gonna use a sander to make them look a bit smoother. That was done in no time and now it's time to make the X on the back and I'm just hoping that this will make the lighting pattern that I want. I haven't tested it out yet so this is going to be interesting. channel you might not know that we have used a lot of RGB LED strips in the past and I really enjoy using them for stuff like lamps because it opens for so many possibilities and also you can get a lot of different looks with it. You can even put it to cold white or warm white if that's what you prefer but you just keep your options open and that's what I love about them. So what I usually use when I make project using RGB LED strips is one of these LED controllers. They look like this. And with it comes a remote control that looks like this. And here you can control the lights with what color you want, what patterns you want and stuff like that. It's easier than you might think to wire this up. You just have to solder four cables onto this and I'm going to show you how to do that as easy as possible. And remember, the link to everything is down in the description. Oh, Bonnie. Hello. Jesus Christ. Let's get down to the basics. This is what an RGB LED strip looks like. And you can cut it into just the length you need as long as it's cut right here on this line. If you're gonna connect two strips together, you just have to solder four wires, one from blue to the blue, red to the red, and so on. That's it. It doesn't even matter where you connect them along the strip as long as they're all connected at some point. Now, when you buy an RGB LED strip online, it usually has a connector like this at one end with four pins on it. You can connect that directly onto the LED controller, just make sure that the arrows line up. Ta-da! Now you can control the colors. Finally, you need a 12 volt input and depending on how many meters of the LED strip you've used, it needs to have enough amps. For a simple lamp like the ones in the video, a 1 or 2 amp supply should suffice. The last little object here that's also part of the LED controller is the signal, the thing you point the controller at to change the color. That's pretty much it for basic RGB. Life lesson, how not to solder RGB LED strips. You can probably see a clear difference between the soldering on these two lamps. Now, this is how you shouldn't do it. Here I have connected a single wire from the green to the green, the red to the red, and so on. And so it looks very messy. Now, what I've done differently here is that I've connected the LED strips together with four wires that are attached together, so it looks a lot cleaner this way. I mean, it doesn't matter because both of them works, it's just cable management though. Now, I've covered it up with hot glue to protect it, but the soldering itself looks just like this. So the 
second lamp is gonna look something like this. So I'm gonna use the remaining part of the plank from the previous lamp together with some 2x1 to make this lamp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my only handsaw and I'm gonna cut out three equally large pieces of both the plank and the 2x1 and then I'm gonna put it together. pretty rough along the edges here so I'm just gonna quickly go over it with a sander. The next step is to put these together and I'm just gonna use some wood glue and nails to connect them. I think I'm gonna have to lift up the middle part that's going to be in the front here so yeah that's that's too small a gap. I think I'm gonna cut two more lengths with this two by one to lift it up enough. I haven't been very good at putting the lid back on top, so now it, everything's just stuck. No, it's empty. <laughs> like home. No. You're just creating problems. <laughs> with glue to attach them together in the pattern I want and because it's just gonna hang on the wall not have any strain on it it should be fun with just glue very nice all that's left to do for this one is to add the LED strip I'm gonna add the RGB LED strips underneath here of all the squares and I also have to add this LED controller. I am going to try to hide it on the side right here so that it is less visible. last lamp I'm gonna use what is at least in my opinion one of the ugliest pieces of wood out there which is a regular 2x2 two two pine wood piece now my goal is to make this into a good-looking lamp I'm gonna use a router to make a channel in the middle of the 2x2 two two. first I gotta find the middle I'm using a router bit that is completely flat and also quite wide so that it will be able to fit a LED strip protection. Goggles, respirator. And the last step is to add the LED strip. And of course you gotta make the cables as long as you need them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the RGB controller somewhere else on the wall and hide it that way. And not put it inside here. And I'm just gonna add some hot glue at the top and the bottom here to really stick it in place. And that's it! Big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now, I've always loved drawing and designing everything from nerdy projects to game characters and websites. And I gotta say that Squarespace really has a lot of beautiful designs to choose from. You can create your own website without having to download anything ever. And also, it's super simple to use. If you or anyone you know need a website or an online store or something like that, this is a great platform to start, no matter your purpose. Go visit squarespace.com naturalnerd to get a free trial and also 10% off your first purchase. 
You can also find the link down below.